with us. Um, it's hard to believe that I'm going to do this. You're going to think I'm crazy, and I am. So I'm going to do it. So we had our big smorgasbord last night, but now we just got to gear up for the next thing. So here's our next thing. We have we always have a community supper in the month of October. Um, we had some we all lined up for that. We had to back out for personal reasons. And so we quickly came up on the fly. We're having a homemade goulash supper um, with uh, cottage cheese and tossed salad and fresh bread um, and desserts. And so we're, gonna, we're trying to make this as easy as possible. Um, so we're looking for 12 people to make goulash and uh, four people to make a couple dozen fall desserts. We're choosing some donations of salad dressings and that's it. Uh, the church will do the rest. We're looking for people to help decorate the tables, dishwashers, Helper, server, stick seller. Um, but to make it even better, we have printed off the recipe for you. You don't have to think about it. Um, it's it's grandma's goulash, and it takes a total of 40 minutes, and you're done, according to the recipe. Now, I don't cook much, so I'm guessing that that's pretty accurate. Uh, we're going to ask you to make it and bring it in, the, bring it in your uh, crock pot. The nice thing about doing this, that way we know it's roughly the same. Uh, oh, Consistency-wise, everything the same thing. So, if you sign up as one of the 12 goulash makers, please just take one of these um, recipes that's at the bottom uh, along with you. This is October 25th, so we've got a little time. Thursday, October 25th at 5.30. So, I'm going to start right here. Mark just going to make sure that it gets around. That's the can, make sure it gets to the other side. Hi! How are you? That's your, that's your pack? Yes. Oh, that'll keep you busy for a while, won't it? Been busy. Glad you're here today. Yeah, you're welcome. If you take a moment to uh, sign the fellowship pack, let us know you're here. Any visitors with us, I hope you got a welcome packet. A warm welcome to you. If you fill out the connect card that's inside, we'll place it in the multicolored box in the back. Uh, we'd love to connect with you. I think that's all the announcements I have for right now. So we will pause now, take a deep breath, relax into our seats, remind ourselves that God is here, God is present, ready, ready to receive whatever it is that we need to let go of, to give that to God this morning. Know that we're loved, that we are the love of God. We enter into this time of worship and use of the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya.
If the Spirit had abandoned us in our need, come to the Lord in prayer. Come, let us worship. Let us worship as we stand and sing our opening song and sing praise to God who reigns above. Number 126.
We hide our pain and our brokenness and our mistakes. We try to erase them from the stories we tell ourselves and tell each other. The God who created us, however, knows our true stories and loves us anyway. Therefore, let us pray together our profession. Strength for the journey. You salt us with fire as we journey in the course of our lives. How we wish we could avoid tribulations. Like Esther before us, we would rather keep our heads down than risk the wrath of the power of God, even if our courage might save others. We would rather shut out the advice of the wise than be instruments of prophetic challenge. We would rather be left alone in our fear and despair than face the demands of faithful living. Forgive us, Lord. Help us remain salty in courage and faith, that we may maintain salt among ourselves and keep peace with one another. In the name of Jesus, we pray. When the road is hard and all seems lost, fear not. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If God had not been on our side, we would be like ashes and dust. God has turned our sadness into joy and our troubles into times of gladness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let us receive one another for peace and love of Christ. <laughs>
are the people of our lives, not our business today. May they be signed in our company to share the heaven and earth and to honor your presence in our lives. With thanksgiving and hope, we pray. Amen.
Um, the trustees are having a work night on Monday, beginning at 5.30, so please be aware of that. If you want to come down and help them, I'm sure they won't turn you away. The fall small group study begins um, this Monday at 6.30. Uh, Linda Wood is under the weather, not feeling great today, so she's staying home to recover. But she asked me to inform those who have signed up to bring a notepad with you, uh, bring your Bible, and to please read chapter 1 of the study book. Personnel uh, committee will meet following worship this morning in the back meeting room. There's a cantata rehearsal at 6.30 on Wednesday, followed by a regular worship choir at 7. Next Sunday is one of my favorite Sundays in the church year, World Communion Sunday. Gather around the table uh, with all the world uh, and celebrate the Lord together. It's also Food Pantry Sunday, so don't forget that. There will be a designated special offering envelope uh, in your bulletin. Or World Communion Sunday. You can read your insert about the health kits and the uh, upcoming holiday bazaar. Lots of ways of getting involved. Um, and don't forget to sign up on the clipboard as it passes by for the October supper. And as always, we welcome you to the chancel after worship to receive prayer and Holy Communion. Any other announcements? Those are concerns. Janet? Yeah, I'm going to the bird yesterday morning. Good to welcome you today. Thank you. Next Sunday, Kay's son, youngest child, Grant, will be getting married. We've got the Country Club in Ganondi. Uh, that's where we'll be taking place. And so, for some reason, Kay felt she needed a substitute next week. So, we'll have to have a substitute. Decided she had an RSVP for that event. So we <laughs> we'll miss her, but we'll welcome our call to the camp. Yes. Uh, people who are suffering from
Let us pray. The Lord God, your peace passes all understanding. Your love is steadfast and true. Your presence is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You walk with us and talk with us on this earthly sojourn. Help us to have eyes to see, <coughs> ears to hear of your presence and goodness. Help us to be challenged to be faithful witnesses and testimonies of your love, kindness, and compassion in every way that we can. We are a forgiven people. You sent your Son to die so that we might live. Help us not take that for granted. Help us to embrace your grace. Help us to embrace our faith and to truly live with each and every breath for you. We thank you, O oh God, that you hear us when we come together as a body of Christ to lift up our joys and our concerns, those things that we need others to know about so that we can carry the burden, the load, and do life together. Lord, you've heard our concerns for those who are grieving, for those who are in need of healing and wholeness. We pray for those who need a good word, who, who need a faith community, someone to lift them up out of their despair. We pray for our country in the midst of its division. We pray, as Linda said, that the good would always outweigh the bad. Lord, help us to find our way by following you. By following you and your call to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly. Help us, O oh God, to be living sanctuaries for you. Lord, receive our prayers. Receive our joys. Receive our very lives as we dedicate them to you today. Hear us now, O God, as we join together in praying those familiar words that we have to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Continue Mark's Gospel, ninth chapter. Hear God's word. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life name than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worms never die and the fires never quench. For whoever will, for everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. 
But if salt has lost its saltiness, how do you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. There's a story about a Roman Catholic church that was hosting the community Thanksgiving service. This was the first for the church and for the community, so naturally everyone was a bit excited. And with great dignity, the priest led his three Protestant colleagues towards the chancel area, and suddenly he realized that he had forgotten to put out chairs for his guests to sit in. Well, in a state of great agitation, he whispered in the ear of one of his elderly lay members, please get some chairs for the guest pastors. Well, the elderly man was quite hard of hearing, and so he asked the priest to repeat his request, and the priest did so a little louder. Please get up and get three chairs for the Protestants. Well, the old man had a puzzled look on his face, but he rose to his feet and he turned towards the rest of the congregation, and he said with a loud voice, This seems highly irregular, but I have been asked to have you stand and give three cheers for the Protestants. <laughs> Wouldn't you have loved to have witnessed that? Roman Catholics cheering for the Protestants, Protestants cheering for the Catholics. Got a problem in our history it? that there's some <coughs> hatred, some animosity towards Christian groups, one Christian group towards another. I don't think it's as bad as it once was. Uh, we've seen in recent years a more coming together. You'll remember last year was the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. Remember, and we saw right here in Rochester at the Roman Catholic Diocese, we saw Lutherans and uh, Catholics coming together and having a joint service, and the Pope made a, a, a cordial statement to the people, you know, about this opening arms towards one another, which is really a rather historic thing because, as we know, the Reformation signified the beginning of the Protestant movement. Really, that was a rebellion against the Roman Church. When Martin Luther nailed those theses to the door, it unleashed a movement, a, mul a, a, a multitude of new denominations uh, came to be, and it brought even some reform to the Roman Church, too. But it also led to some antagonism. But much of that, I pray, is behind us. And so now we can concentrate on our common enemies, human evil, injustice, and oppression. And you and I, as the Church of Jesus Christ, can choose to bear the name of Christ in the world through our words and our actions. Our lesson for today includes uh, some sh shocking incident in the life of Christ. The disciple John comes up to him and says, Teacher, we saw somebody driving out demons in your name, and we had to stop him because he's not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Did you catch that? Whoever is not against us is for us. And then Jesus goes on and says, Truly I tell you, anyone who gives a cup of water in my name because you belong to me will certainly not lose their reward. Well, to me, this passage represents the opposite of what our common Christian history displayed. Jesus is preaching tolerance for others who call themselves by his name. And meanwhile, the disciples are trying to protect their name brand. And it appears to me that we as followers have been more like Jesus' original 12 than like Jesus happened to us? We've splintered into all sorts of different denominations, and all of us think that we have the corner on the truth of the gospel on, on Jesus. We own it. 
And I think God must get a good laugh from time to time over that if it doesn't cause God to cry from time to time. Jesus' disciples were upset that someone who wasn't part of their group was performing these wonderful deeds of casting out demons, and they were doing it in Jesus' name. They felt like they were the ones who had the privilege, and no one else should have it. I mean, it must have been one of those occasions that made Jesus both smirk, while at the same time caused him to shake his head, you know, scratch his head a bit. Don't stop him, Jesus said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. Whoever is not against us is for us. Well, that would have been a shock. That would have been a shock to those disciples, right? Hit them right in their guts. No, they wanted Jesus to affirm them. They were the ones to bear the name of Christ. They wanted to know that they owned that trademark. Thank you very much. Instead, Jesus tells them, let the man do his thing. He's helping somebody who's suffering. Jesus was simply trying to, I think, expand their definition of what it means to follow Christ and bear his name. He wanted them to accept people who didn't express their faith in the same way that they did. There are times, I think, when we too have a hard time accepting other people, sometimes even other Christians, right? We think that our way may be the best, that everyone who's a Christian should, you know, talk and sing act just like us. Of course, with our nation being divided as it is, hence those prayer concerns being lifted up this morning, our country is divided between red and blue, conservative and liberal, the one percenters and all the rest of us. I mean, I really think we're rather fortunate, actually, that we don't have a lot more sectarian violence among us. When will we realize that Jesus Christ is too big to restrict? Too big to restrict to one denomination, one culture, one nationality. There are people of every circumstance, of every ethnic origin, of every sexual orientation, of every skin color, who bear the name of Jesus Christ. Just think of how small and petty we're being when we try to restrict Jesus to people who look and think and act like we do. Truth is always bigger than just one person or one denomination's grasp of it. Like too many people today, the disciples had a rather narrow view of who we we're supposed to be as followers of Christ. And Jesus is simply trying to stretch them. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose your reward. That's, come on, that's an interesting statement, right? It indicates that a kind deed is more important than our doctrinal understandings. Just think about these incidents that are in our lesson this morning. Here you have a man casting out demons. We don't really know exactly what that means. Maybe it was somebody with a mental or emotional problem. Of course, back in the day, in that time period, um, things like epilepsy were thought to come from, you know, a demon possession. We just don't know for sure. But whatever it means, it means that somebody was suffering. And here was someone who was trying to help. Was doing a random act of kindness in Christ's name. And the disciples don't like it. Because he's not one of them. And they wanted it to stop. And then Jesus ends his lesson by telling about someone who gives a cup of cold water. Well, that's a good thing. That was a great thing. Because think about it. Water was scarce in the day, right? And the land was hot and dry and dusty. Do we give the person bestowing this act of kindness some sort of litmus test to see if he or she knows the proper book of confession or the book of order or the book of discipline or the book of revolution, uh, resolutions or can name all 67 books of the Bible? There's 66 books of the Bible. How's he never paying attention? I don't know if you are. Maybe they, if they know all 66 books of the Bible or if they could define what the word liturgy means 
something like that before we would accept a gift like this? I mean, you wouldn't do that. It's absurd. Just doing it. Kind of eat. Boy, we don't have enough of that in this world. There's a website I, I've drawn your attention to it before. Actsofkindness.org It has all sorts of uh, stories that they tell about random acts of kindness uh, situations. And here's one of them. It's called Houston Story. There's a lot of other ones on there. It tells about being on a plane, Houston being on a plane sitting next to a woman who was, in, in his words, relentlessly energetic and fidgety. Houston was tired and wanted to take a nap. But before he could manage that, the woman tapped him on the shoulder and introduced herself. She said, hi, my name is Helga, she said. And they got talking. He eventually came up that Houston had started an organization back in high school called Great. Random Acts of Kindness, etc. As Houston described what his organization did, Helga got very serious and told him that she thought, quote, there was nothing more important in the world than kindness. While well, he was curious why she was so passionate about the subject and as the plane took off, she dove into a story about the last time she had flown, about three years before. She was en route to Arizona because she'd gotten some news of her father's failing health. And just as the plane was departing to Phoenix, her the father's physician called to inform her that her dad had rather su suddenly passed away. And for the three-hour plane ride, she sat in stunned silence among a bunch of strangers. When she arrived at the airport in Arizona, she walked to the nearest wall, sat down, and she cried. And here's the part Houston says he'll never forget. For two hours, she sat and wept while thousands of people walked to and fro near her. Helga looked at him and said, Houston, not a single person stopped and asked if I was okay that day. Not one person. It was that day that I realized how much we need each other. It was that day I realized that kindness isn't normal. About a week and a half ago, Alicia and Gabe and I were doing what we normally do, trying to be the most boring people in the world. <laughs> and we were visiting one of the three area malls, because that's what we do. We go to Eastview Marketplace in Grease Ridge, and then we repeat that. Sometimes we go out of order to really be risque, and we'll go to Marketplace Grease Ridge in Eastview. <laughs> But uh, we like the food court because, frankly, we all can get whatever it is that we want. And Gaby likes chicken nuggets and french fries, and that's about it. And you can find that at every food court because they all have Burger King. East Street, our marketplace had not had Burger King, but recently they just put one in. So if you like Burger King, go to the marketplace. They also have puppies. So you can go and see the puppies at the, the pet store. But anyways, we, had, we were done eating uh, dinner. This was a... Thursday or Friday night, and we were walking out, and, and uh, we're walking out the doors, and I hear, Sir, 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 you're a minister, aren't you? I'm like, darn it. <laughs> and believe me, I don't dress like this Monday to Friday. You know, I didn't even have one of these things on. It was just me. I think I had jeans and a dress shirt on or something. Might have even had sneakers. I mean, believe that? That's <laughs> You know, so I'm thinking, man, do I got minister written over my forehead? What? So, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Christian minister. Yes, I am. And so, of course, he's in a wheelchair and he, and he rolls himself over to me. And the poor guy stinks to high heaven. You, you can just tell he's just down in his luck. Well, now he's got my attention. He's got this Christian's attention. So, here's Jesus putting it all to the test. Now, I could have walked, kept right on going, had my family with me. But I chose to stop that day and got to know him a little bit, a little bit of a conversation. Um, realized what he really needed was to be washed up and fed. You know, and then he needed some resources uh, beyond that day because I was going to go. And he was going to still be there. So I gave him some resources of some Presbyterian <laughs> friends I have uh, down at Third Presbyterian. And uh, I took him inside and took him over to the bathroom. Got him washed up because he had fallen out of his wheelchair. He was filthy. And got him washed up and got him a subway. Well, he wanted double meat and double cheese and a lot of things. <laughs> and if, they could, if I could have a peanut butter cookie, that'd be great. Well, they didn't have peanut butter cookies, but they had laid potato chips. That made him happy. So I said that I sent Alicia and Gabe to the car, know that they were safe, uh, safe where they were 
took him in, did all this, ate with him, talked with him, prayed with him, gave him a blessing. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? What does it mean to bear his name? Sometimes it means just stopping. Doing the right thing. And doing what you can do. Jesus calls us to expand our understanding of his love and grace to people like Skipper. That was his name. He really wanted Long John Silver. Well, we don't have him. So, apologize. We're to expand our understanding because Christ is Lord of all glory. Whenever people offer one another a cup of cold water, I believe that Jesus is there. They may not know his name, but I believe he's there. This is our task as the church, as people of God. We are to introduce people to the Lord of kindness. No person has ever lived who is kinder than Jesus Christ. And he wants us to do these sorts of acts in his name. Mark Twain once said that kindness is a language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Loving kindness, I must believe, is the language that communicates what it means to be the people of God, the church, and God's beloved. Reverend Kent Miller has given us a paraphrase of Paul's beautiful words in 1 Corinthians 13. He puts it this way. I may have a brilliant mind, a wonderful personality, and a healthy body, but if I am not kind to those around me, it does me no good. I may have a good income, a beautiful home, and an expensive car, but if I am not kind and generous in sharing them, I don't make a difference in the world. I may have great success in my business or profession. I may have power and influence over many people, but if I don't treat people with kindness, I am a failure. Kindness is love in action. Kindness is the pebble in the pond whose ripples can change the world. Having the faith to move mountains is great. Having hope in bleak circumstances is wonderful. But deeds of loving kindness transforms lives and it lasts forever. I may have many wonderful qualities in my life, but without kindness, they aren't enough. It's crucial. There's only one way to communicate the gospel that truly attracts people into the kingdom of Christ. And that's with words and service of loving kindness. So often people, when we're doing things like mission work, sometimes we do it out of a feeling of superiority. We feel like that person, that the target of our mission is distasteful or deplorable. We have our minds made up about them. We don't realize that Christ is already at work in the life of that other person through acts of kindness, decency, and concern. The only thing they really need is a name for that redeeming work in their life. It's already going on. That's where we come in. Our role is to be bearers of Christ's name. And to help other people interpret what it is that God is already doing and do it with kindness. Of course, the best way to witness to the Lord is through our own random acts of compassion and love. This is the way to effectively communicate the wonder of the gospel. It does not depend on labels, formal affiliations, or validations, or certain boxes being checked off. It's offering a cup of cold water in Jesus' name to anybody who's suffering. It's recognizing that when someone offers up a cup of cold water, Christ is already at work in that person's life, whether they're able to name it or not. Anytime anyone, regardless of their background or experience, is trying to help somebody else, Christ is there. Back in the 500s, there was a Christian teacher who taught a lesson to his students. He asked them to form a large circle with everyone facing inward. And then he told them to imagine that God was the center of that circle. And next, the teacher told the students to move toward that center, to move toward God. 
And when the students did that, the circle naturally shrank in size until each of the students ended up being shoulder to shoulder. The teacher then finished the class by saying, the lesson is this. You can't get closer to God without at the same time getting closer to one another. So three cheers for the Protestants and the Catholics and those of every sect and journey of life who are bringing kindness to the world. For it's been said, kindness is another word for God. Go forth, church. Bear the name of Christ in your words, your deeds, and your prayers. Draw close to God by drawing close to God's people. Be faithful to the gospel and to the one who is most faithful in every way. Jesus the Christ. To the glory of God and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand and affirm our faith together. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve, with believers in every time and place. We rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us sing our closing song, God of Grace and God of Glory, number 577. <laughs>
countenance upon you and give you peace as you go now into the world to bear the name of Christ. Amen.